Uh, hello and welcome. Delighted to say I'm joined by Michael Fenley, former Kilkenny hurler, obviously manager of Offaly at the moment. Michael, you're here on behalf of Arthritis Ireland to raise awareness of a form of inflammatory arthritis called, and I hope I get the name right, ankylosing spondylitis AS. And this is something that you were uh, you, you were diagnosed with at 20 years of age and it's kind of been whichever since. First of all, did I get the pronunciation right and, and can you explain it? Yeah, so, sounds good. Yeah, um, you know, it, was, it was a funny one when I first first heard it. Now, sixteen odd years ago, um, ankylosis spondylitis. Yeah, so uh, it's inflammation of joints, and uh, you know, in the back, it can be in the you know knee joints, ankles as well. Like you know, it can be all over the body, but probably primarily it is associated with the back. Um, and you know, I suppose the first time I came across it really was my dad ended up being diagnosed diagnosed with it after a couple of days in the hospital. And um, I think just, I know you looked at the video earlier on there and basically after I started Googling it and looking it up, basically I started seeing symptoms that I was displaying as well. And I had a fairly strong feeling that I had this condition as well. So um, there's probably a bit of relief at that time that, you know, there was something there that I could put my finger on because I was having a lot of difficulty going to physios and a lot of pain in my back. Like, and I didn't know why this was happening or what was going on, uh, even though it was, it was manageable, but just it was, I was on the physio bed 24-7. And was it a case that you and your dad were suffering similar level of symptoms or were his much worse than yours? Yeah, like funnily enough, like the two of us would probably be quite enough and we probably wouldn't say a whole pile if, if we're going through pain. And I, I think his came, came upon him late enough in life because um, it can come upon you in your 20s and 30s, but it can be actually in your 40s and 50s as well. And the key with this really is everyone is unique to themselves and it could come on as a teenager as well. Like, you know, so it's very different for everybody. And I think you know it, it wasn't until he actually his body kind of just nearly shut down and he ended up in hospital that they did a, a number of tests on him and they couldn't really figure out what was going on and he just went through a really bad acute phase of it i think and um and i suppose from there then you know went on medication and was able to, to, to sort it out a bit um so yeah the two of us were, were very different really in terms of what we were going through um he got very stiff and very sore in his neck in particular and back and kind of just kind of shut down a bit yeah and like so what were his fears at that stage when you're going through those acute symptoms? And have you ever had symptoms quite to that level? Well, he wouldn't tell you a whole pile in terms of what he's thinking. He's a, he's a quite enough man uh, that way. Um, and not, not a whole pile phases him, to be honest. But um, but yeah, we, we knew very little about it. I'd never heard it before. An arthritis condition. There's 100 plus arthritis conditions. Um, so yeah, we didn't know much. He didn't say much either, to be honest. Um, mine, mine was probably uh, light to moderate, to be honest. You know, it's just kind of uh muscle soreness in my back was the main thing like kind of achiness that i just needed to release pressure release a bit of pain and i could play away i could train away no problem but then three or four days later i'd be in the same boat again where there's stiffness soreness and you know yourself hurling is a is a mobile game you're moving or running you're twisting you're turning you're rotating and i was going out nearly like w w with a knot in my back uh, you know hold back frozen hold back stiff neck 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 was fine earlier on it wasn't until maybe five or six years down the line that the neck started causing issues in terms of stiffness and soreness again so this thing evolved and changed over my 16 years at the moment i'm definitely managing much better feeling much better but it definitely went through really a bad acute phases and and, and just going back to your question really it probably was 2013 and 14 really um and, and even 15 as well that i really hit home in terms of um, lower back issues and it caused you know massive trouble for us for, for a couple of months yeah like how bad did it get because i remember interviewing you around these years and i can't say i remember the term as being used but i knew you were having lots of difficulty with it so like can you explain what it was what it was like during that period yeah, so again, I was having disc issues as well back then, and you know, I had bulge, bulging discs and I had protrusion in one or two discs. So I, I think that definitely was having an impact on, on a lot of things that was going on in my back. And obviously, the AS was underlying everything, and that's an inflammatory disease, and, and like you know, your body is attacking itself pretty much. Um, so again, you do you do go through kind of acute phases of inflammation in the body, and that's not obviously helping with with, with, with poor discs as well. And as I said, the game is very physical, and you're moving and, and the mobility of it all. Um, but but at one stage, just my lower back started causing awful grief, and, and it felt unstable. Um, again, very hard to probably explain what I was going through, but I, I just had massive instability in my lower back. And I'd say, Shane, if you pushed me, I would have fell to the ground. Like that's how bad it was. 
Um, when I tried to run, I couldn't. Uh, even walking was causing trouble. So during that phase for about two or three months in around 2014, um, I, I lost about nine kg of muscle, um, and, 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 and this is backed up by DEXA scans. Like you know, we got DEXA scans, you know, over the course of playing for Kilkenny, and you can see the amount of muscle mass, and you can see your weight and your fat mass. And my muscle mass lost about nine nine kg, uh, which is huge in season as well. Like you know, normally if you lost one or two kg, it would be a lot. Like you know, but I just the weight fell off me. Um, I wasn't sleeping. Um, again, I was wondering when this thing was going to stop. Um, and it was just a matter of just switching it off nearly. And thankfully, through different medication trials or trying different things, we found something that worked. And, uh, and I just switched off the pain. I was able to sleep again. I was able to run. I was able to move. I was able to get back hurting. And, and thankfully, got back at the, the latter end of the season. It must have been very strange as a 20-year-old to be here in arthritis because, you know, it's probably something that people typically consider this is something you'll get when you're 60 70 years of age so that must have been strange yeah and then even if you can jump on to 2009 when you won the four in a row you were captain lift the title and then you were on the bus and the homecoming and and a photographer asked you to hold up the cup and the four fingers for the four in a row that like that sounds like it would have been quite terrifying for a guy in his early 20s yeah look it's probably funny more than anything at the time to be honest because i was so young and like with arthritis as you said like you associate with elderly people and normally visually you'd see someone maybe hunched over um you know they're struggling to walk and those different things and and maybe their hands are a bit a bit you know uh you know poor movement in their hands and that like and obviously look as a young person at the time but like the whole the hand thing like you know if i there's a camera there like this is the way i was was like you know and that's obviously mm. after decreasing again and i can't straighten my fingers here now um so that did hit home yeah there's issues and it's only over the last couple of years that um if i'm tying you know my young fella's shirt or something like that basically with with small buttons after two or three of them oh i'm in agony and i have to stop yeah. like i have to straighten up my fingers and try and uh you know bend them and, and straighten them as much as possible like you know so yeah look that's not ideal um but like, as i say like it is what it is like there is people worse off than me there is people with more severe arthritis conditions than i have um i'm still able to exercise you know moderately and i'm still living a good life to be honest you know um you know down the line things will, will definitely get more hairier i'd say like but look it is what it is you have it and you have to get on with life and, and try and live it as best as you can do you, do you was it was it a big reason why you probably retired from kilkenny maybe a year or two earlier than you would have wanted similarly with richie power i suppose he he retired very early i think 29 because of his knee issues yeah no definitely look at I, I was probably very fortunate to play till, till 32 33 years of age um i didn't think i'd get that far to be honest and um and just yeah the, the injuries became more severe and again i've no doubt that the arthritis condition was underlying a lot of it in terms of the tendon health ligament health um, bone health you know I, I ended up with a you know when i was back playing at my club when i was 34 35 and up with uh, micro fracturing in my knee because i had so much damage of cartilage done and um and look at my last game in 2017 against Waterford, like it came off with three injuries. My foot uh, got infected from a huge welt. Um, my, I, I, I definitely, I tore some cartilage in that game in terms of my knee because I needed a, a scope after that. And I, I tore my hamstring that day as well. So I was, if we had to win that game against Waterford, we went to extra time, I think, from top of my head. I went to extra time, uh, I came off um, maybe at the start of extra time. And like I would have gone, if we'd, if we'd win that, I was gone obviously for four or five, six weeks, if not even longer. Um, so yeah, at that stage, that was a red, red flag saying, here, look, I'm putting myself through uh, horrendous conditions here now. And again, your health is your wealth. And, you know, I was, you know, my back to the club, obviously, and I still went back for another big operation of the club, like, you know, a year later, like, so that was frustrating in itself. And, you know, en en enjoyment kind of goes out, but fairly quickly, if you're six, seven months rehabbing again. Yeah. And like, how much were you able to enjoy hurling during that period? Like the, the talk of 2011, that you barely... You barely trained in between matches and you still ended up hurler as you hurler of the year so obviously there was great reward to that but and even you're talking about 2017 and all those were you able to enjoy it during those periods or were you just worried all the time or what i think it might just have frozen here for a second they're okay there now yeah yeah no, we're okay again there michael yeah i'm not sure if you heard the question but during that 2011 when you won hurler of the year even 17 all those inch are you able to enjoy hurling or were you racked with kind of fear and doubts about what you were putting your body through yeah look, there, there was fear definitely there was doubts um every year because just i was prone to injuries and um and i hated getting injured and obviously i wanted to be playing championship games on playing league games i play as much as i can 
and it, just, it came to a, a certain stage where look I have to actually pick and choose maybe in terms of league games and, and what's possible and what's not and the management and the SNCs and the medical team were, were really supportive in around that so that was always very frustrating and I would have found myself like I, I was I missed Leinster nearly like I always got an injury around, around that time and whether it's a, a bad ankle injury or whatever it may be and then obviously you're you're pushing the boat out then to try and get back fit and you're trying to get back stronger and powerful and all that kind of stuff get back hurling so there was huge pressures going on there was it always enjoyable no it wasn't uh, I did a lot of training on my own uh, I was in the gym a lot on my own the lads would be out training on the field maybe get my work done in the gym I might be running along the sideline then maybe as well while they're training and um, I suppose the, the, the real probably not a sad part to it, like, but just a lonely part to it is like you're in a dressing room then with them at the end and you're I think it's just stalled again for a second there. Hopefully yeah, sorry, it just dropped for a second, Michael. Yeah, so you're, you're just feeling that outside of it, outside of the group nearly, and you just want to go home a little bit. And, uh, and the sooner you can get back train with them, the better, like, you know. So so definitely, yeah, look, there was lonely elements to it, and even sometimes you'd wonder are you better off just walking away, you know? Um, really? But anyway, kept going and, and thankfully got a good 12 odd years out of the Wicked Kenny. Yeah, which wasn't bad going and plenty of all Ireland's in the middle of it. Through working with LIT and doing sports science, I'm probably just um, not giving it its full title there, but like you're probably very well up on the sort of prognosis and, and the future for stuff like this. Do you know how much worse it can get? And apologies if that's a little bit of an insensitive way to put it. Yeah, no, not, not at all, no. Um, no, I think everyone's unique and, and it depends on, on the severity of your condition. And look, this thing can change as well. Like, you know, it's changed over the, over the 16 years that I've had it. And thankfully, as I said, it's kind of after settling somewhat. Um, I can still do it. Like, I'm not running around the hurling field, twisting and turning and getting hits and knocks, obviously. Like, that's not the ideal scenario if you have an underlying condition like that. But uh, but no, I don't know exactly what it's going to look like. Um, and I'm not, I'm not overly overly concerned about There's no point worrying about it, to be honest. It's not going to help in, that, in any shape or form. Um, once I can still play golf, play with my kids and all that for the next 20, 30 years, you know, I think that'll be that'll be great. Um, so yeah, I don't really think about it to be honest. And I think when I did change over to lecturing um, and, and to the sports science and strength and conditioning back when I was like 27, 28 years of age, it definitely helped prolong my career with Kenny because I definitely had more time to, to do rehab, to do prehab. Um, it definitely educated you more on it. Whether that's a good or bad thing, that's another thing because you're asking more questions, you're looking down different pathways of how can we do this or how can we do that. Um, so that's probably a headache for maybe SNCs and for medics in one sense. But uh, at, you know, at the same time, I think it's good to have an understanding of your own body. And I had that very much. Um, and as I said, the lecturing with LIT in particular has really helped me to, to to do that, to spend that time on trying to prevent injury, to try and keep my body as strong as I could um, and yeah, stay injury free. And uh, do, do you think um, going down that route with the with the, the sports science has really equipped you to become an inter-county manager because you're probably acutely aware, aware of what a player needs in terms of getting to that level? And if I remember correctly, you, you did a, a bit of time out with the Sydney Swans, for example, so you saw a professional setup. Oh, most definitely, Shane. Like you know, you're you know the crack with management now. Like you gotta you gotta have an understanding of GPS. You have to have an understanding of the medical side of things, of injuries, um, of rehab. You have to understand the monitoring, the wellness side of things. Like for me, but for me, I, I feel you have to. So I'm very definitely in a in a strong position on that side of things. And obviously, you've S and C as well. You've the coaching, like you know. So I think it's good to have um, your finger in all those different departments and be able to add value to be able to understand what's going on to have good conversations with the physios SNCs, performance analysis like you know and and uh and talk about those things because you know looking at probably more traditional managers maybe who haven't had that opportunity who are maybe coming from the financial side of things would have huge um would have would have huge let's say um uh, traits in leadership and you know they'd be quite they're quite strong in those areas but um you're very much you're very much banking on someone um, telling you what, what what they think, whether it's medical or S and C. Like, and you have to go under a word. If you have no experience of what's what and, and that side of things, you're just basically one hundred percent trusting someone. And not that I don't trust people, but I just think it's good to have an understanding of those areas. And I think it just adds more value to the whole environment. Yeah, absolutely. And just even to talk about Offaly, then, how like I'm sure you watched Shane Lowry in the Ryder Cup at the weekend, or you had some idea of how he went, and he won a great point, and obviously saw the celebrations. How big of an, an a positive has he been? Like, would you have been speaking to him much? I know Michael Dignan obviously has had a huge part of this too, but you know those two guys. How much have they helped in terms of what you're trying to do with Offaly? 
Yeah, no, look, they, they've a, a added huge value, I think, to the whole thing. And um, and as was said before, like Shane's probably been working in the background, I think, really, with the underage side of things. Um, you know, he's a huge ambassador for GA. His family is steeped in the GA history. And uh, and obviously, he's huge interest in himself. So, um, so no, it's been great to have him around. And obviously, the passion, I suppose, and, and, and what he's been doing on the golfing side of things has been great, too. And it's been great for Offaly. And it's been a really good year for football and hurling, I think, like in particular. So, uh, so both Michael and Shane, oh, it's, it's been very positive. Um, and I think, you know, you need, a, you need that leadership there, I suppose. You need that support there. And, and Shane obviously is back and forth with different competitions throughout the year. So I haven't seen a whole pile of him, really. Um, I think he's trying to get, get to the game and he'd be gone straight away, maybe on a flight out, out of, I think, under 20 spinal. He was gone that evening, basically, he- heading back to Dublin to get a flight out of, out of the country. So, um, so, yeah, no, it's been very, very positive. Um, and you do need people like that, like in in the county board set up uh, in the counties, you know, to, to support the GA side of things, whether it's the underage um, and and the senior side of it, like you know. So it's really positive. Yeah, I, I spoke with Michael Dignan a few weeks back at Croke Park, and he was very positive about uh, about your journey so far. And like you see, even Tomas O'Shea getting involved now with the footballers under John Mahan, and it does feel like there's a bit of a feel good factor around Offaly, even the fact that you're up in the in Division One in the hurling next next year, and you also won the Christie Ring. So, do you get that sense of a feel good factor around the county? Um, I'm most definitely, yeah, hundred percent. Like, look, I'm not living up in Offaly, but um, you know, even through social media and that, like, you know, you'd see an awful lot of, uh, you know, a lot of good comments and a lot of good praise for Offaly, what's going on, and um, and anytime you are up there, like, you know, people are on a high, like, you know, things are good, and it's great to have Tomas coming in as well in terms of. You know, he's a great coach in mind. He's a great mind for the Gaelic football side of things. And, and tactically, he's, he seems quite strong too from seeing him on the Sunday game. So he definitely will add value. And, uh, and again, it's a great profile to have for those younger players that will be coming through on the on the offly side of it. So so overall, look, it's, it's, it's massively positive. Um, like we are next year. Like next year is going to be a different year. It's a new year. Uh, we're going into the Lions Den now in, in February, March in terms of playing the likes of Limerick, who are other champions, playing Cork, who are, who are uh, other finalists. Like, so that's going to be a huge step, Shane, um, for us. Like, and, and the Gaelic football side of things, like they're going into Division 2 in the league as well. That's going to be massively competitive for them. Like, so, uh, so yeah, look, next year's going to look probably very different, but we're looking to improve, develop, um, keep building that culture that's an awfully, um, you know, it's, there's going to be still time. Time is needed here, and we're not going to jump from Christy Ring to beating uh, other champions in Lee McCarthy, like you know, like that's that's a huge, huge jump there. Uh, so we just, uh, if our lads can keep improving and developing, I think that's that's where we need to be. Yeah, even just looking at your entire campaign for the league, Galway, Limerick, Cork, Wexford, Clare, geez, it hardly gets more difficult than that. And but I'm looking at what what happened with Westmead this year. So in most of their league games, they lost quite heavily. They pushed Waterford quite close, but it kind of stood to them going into the Joe McDonough campaign, in which they eventually won and had a great performance against Kerry in the final. Now, you will have the likes of Antrim also in there next year. So maybe, like, you might go through some tough days, but it could stand to you going into the Joe McDonough. Yeah, look, the, the results might be overly pretty now. Like, look, if you are if you have to speculate. But, um, again, not, not concerned with that. It's just trying to get lads' experience maybe at that level and at that intensity. Like, you can't, you, you can't talk about intensity. You have to actually see it. You have to... You have to uh, experience it, and that's what we will experience next February, March. Like so, that hopefully will help our training sessions. Like I know Westmeath had a had a high number of injuries in around that time of the league because I think the intensity was so high, and again they probably weren't accustomed to that type of training. Um, so that that can cause trouble in itself. Like you know, picking up injuries and, and whether you get them sorted before the Joe McDonough or not. And yeah, look, it worked for Westmeath last year, or sorry, this year. But like Westmead barely got over Kildare and 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 uh, you know in that game in, in their group phase, like you know, so uh, you know you never know what can happen in each game. And I've no doubt if Westmead didn't get through to that final, there'd be a different uh, there'd be a different um, observation of oh god, it was a disaster for Westmead getting bet in all those games, and obviously it didn't help him in the Joe McDonough. If you get me, like you know, so the narrative changes Shane every single time, and it's always really fine margins um, every year and in every game, like you know. So look. Uh, we are who we are, which we're very happy with, and looking forward to the league, looking forward to seeing lads again, hopefully to uh, challenge themselves, get better, and obviously the Joe, the Joe Mack is the big one for us, and that's going to be really competitive with Antrim back down there now next year as well, and obviously Cardo will be building now onto their second year uh, with Malali t- taking charge of them again, like, you know, so Kerry obviously new management now as well, so, um, and Downer there from last year, and Meter there from last year, so that's going to be massively competitive. 
Yeah, and I'm sure you're watching all the club stuff at the moment in Offaly. And the likes of, like, I'm wondering, is the door open for players to come in again? I know uh, Keelan Kiley, he's kind of expressed an interest in coming back after, you know, I think he had a kid and maybe he was looking at building a house and stuff. You had a very busy year and withdrew this year. Yeah, look, 100% watching every game. And, um, you know, it, that's 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 key, really. Like, you know, you're looking to see our lads putting their hand up that are potentially good enough to play for Offaly. And, uh, and Keelan is probably one of two, 300 players to be honest you know so like we, we had Keelan for a year and he had a very very busy year to be honest like he had, he had a child and uh, he was starting to build a house and he needed a year off like you know so so yeah definitely you'd be keeping an eye on Keelan you'd be keeping an eye on every player really keeping an eye on the players that are on the panel at the moment and are, are they showing you know are they sh showing good good games good, good uh, performances to allow them I suppose to be picked for next year for the panel so um, I suppose going back to my own experience with Kenny our panel was always open and that's the way I definitely see things in off leagues, keep an open panel. And if lads are putting their hands up in, tra in training, sorry, in, in club games, I think that's very, very important. And showing the right behavior, right attitude. Like, you know, we, we really, you know, we, we built a strong uh, culture this year. Like, we've we, we, we definitely connected and definitely um, knitted better this year, I think, um, than last year. And that does take time. And, and hopefully next year again, we can get even tighter as a group, like, you know, in off league and, uh, and keep thriving, I suppose, for, for more success. Yeah, absolutely. I have a few comments coming in asking me why a Tipperary man is wearing a Kilkenny jersey. You can get it at orgoretro.com, 15% off with our uh, with the promo code our game. I'm sure you have an eyebrow raised at it too, but I don't know, maybe Kilkenny man, you're based in Thurless there at the moment, or certainly working down there. There's a bit of a, I don't know, a switcheroo going on here at the moment. But anyway, just to ask, actually ask you about Kilkenny, it's, it's almost a shame that you weren't drawn in Kilkenny's side for the league, although maybe you would have liked to avoid that. Eddie Brennan's done it before with Leash, but... Uh, Brian Cody's on for a 24th season. Where, where do you think Kilkenny are at in terms of, um, I don't know, aspirations for All Ireland? They've won the last two Leinsters anyway. Yeah, like I think they've um, they've done very well the last couple of years. To be fair, like they're still bringing home silverware, which is um, which is not easy. Um, so on that side of things, like I think it's it's, it's great. Um, I know there's a lot of people out there saying they like a fresh face maybe in there and they like something different. Like, but but personally, I don't see someone there. That's stepping up to that position yet. Um, that's me on. That, that's the honest truth. Um, I think people do like to see change. We like to see change in everything. Uh, whether it's you're there for four, five, six years, whatever it is. Brian is there twenty odd years at this stage, but he is still bringing home silverware. Um, so yeah, look, it's a catch twenty two, Shane. To be honest, uh, it really is. Like you know, if we change management, are we going to be any better? Are we going to bring home silverware? I don't know. No one knows. No one knows that. To be honest. Um, so like I think there is a, a decent group of players there, and you know I think Connor Fielding's probably came in, and, and hopefully from what I gather, has brought up the players on a bit more in terms of the coaching side of things, and maybe tactically, like you know you, you would see, you would like to see um, Kenny probably setting up a bit better maybe against the oppositions because you know tactically the game has gone to another level, and um, Inky Kenny I suppose you know we, we probably were so good back in the day like we didn't need to worry too much about tactics like you know of course we. We, um, you know, we we had our half hour link coming out. Our midfielders went deep as well. Like so, there was kind of minute enough tactics in terms of how we set up against the Cork and these teams, and how we how we split kind of challenges and that on the opposition puck out. So we have always we have always done a bit of, a bit of tactical work, like, but it has never been too significant. Um, but I think just the personnel that we had back then, like you know, genuinely lads could win their own ball, like you know, like you'd. Any forward on any given day could actually be a man in a match. Like, you know, between Martin Comfort, Eddie Brennan, Henry Sheff, and Richie Power. Like, you, you keep going on. There's about five or six more lads there I haven't mentioned that could actually be a man in a match. So, we had serious teams, serious talent back then. And that's that was huge, advantageous in terms of um, overcoming teams without thinking too much of the tactical side of things. Yeah. And what about TJ? He's, he's going to be 34, I think, pretty soon. Um, are there guys stepping in to sort of help with the workload? I mean, Owen Cody, who you'd know very well, and obviously Adrian Mullen too, they're the, the ones kind of step that are really standing out. And Mullen looks like he's hitting the ground running again after doing the cruise ship. I suppose it's well over a year ago at this stage. Yeah. And that, that... Oh, seems to just stall for a second again. Hopefully he'll come back now. Good there, Shane, yeah? Yeah, we're back again, yeah. 
Yeah, so just on that, yeah, yeah like the likes of the ACL injury can take time for, for for you to get back right, and it can definitely take a lot more than ten months for you to get back to your best. So he's definitely in a better a better place. And uh, on Cody has really came on in leaps and bounds. Um, again, over the last two years in particular, like he's got much stronger, his work rate is, is improved, and it's becoming nearly a, one of the key forwards for for uh, for Kenny. TJ is TJ, like you know, he was still you know put him under a high ball, um, freeze, you name it, you know, give him half a yard inside the box, he'll stick it. Um, so he definitely will, will add value there and just yeah, get more lads around them and stepping up. And I think they are they're slowly but surely stepping up. Like, and like TJ, to be fair, is, is out on his own. It's probably one of the best players of, of all time, nearly. He's up there with, with a couple of them. Like, so you're never going to get lads that are you know as good as him. Um, but I suppose, yeah, if lads can contribute more on the scoreboards, that's what you're looking for. And I think lads are, I think I do really think lads are, and I think they will improve under the likes of Connor Field and, and Martin Comfort and lads, and hopefully they can go up to another level next year. I've no doubt the planning it, it, it has started already. Um, and hopefully, as I said, yeah, we, they'll get back to, you know, semi-final final side of things. Like, you know, so I think they have been doing well the last two years. Um, and, you know, the Cork game, I think Cork are probably just a better team this year, being honest about um, on that side of it. Uh, I won't keep you too much longer, but just to ask you about Colin Bonner. He was obviously your manager with Ballyhale and uh, helped steer you to an All-Ireland. He's taken over as Tipperary manager. So what, what are Tipperary getting there, do you reckon? Um, I think Connor is a, or Colin, sorry, is a, a real you know, uh, likeable manager, first of all, a likeable man, likeable coach. Um, you know, he's, he's, a, he's a, a player's manager, I'd say, in one sense. Like, you know, he's great to connect with, with, with players and, and with people. And uh, my time with, with, with Colin, like, you know, he was very, very good at coaching. And, you know, we enjoyed the training sessions. We enjoyed the crack afterwards, beforehand. So really, really good guy, to be honest, you know. And I've no doubt, like, you know, he's looking at putting in a strong backroom team there now in around him, like, you know, an experienced backroom team if he can, because I think that's going to be important for him. He obviously has experience with Carlo and, and for, I think he's there for maybe four years and, and had, had a really good time with Carlo and brought him up, um, you know, at, Hopefully it'll just come back there. Apologies on my internet, it's not good, Shane. It's, a, it's okay yeah, there now, is it? You're back again. Uh, we'll, we'll finish up just after this one anyway, Mike. Yeah, so yeah, no, no Bonner, look, all around good guy. And I think he'll, um, you know, he'll bring that kind of uh, personal side of things, personal side of things, I think, in terms of players expressing themselves again, maybe in Tipperary um, and maybe, you know, enjoying it again, maybe in that, like, you know, so it'll be interesting to see how it goes, but it would be interesting his backroom team in terms of who comes in as coach and that and, uh, and the strength conditioning and all that side of it. Like, that would be a, a big area for him to get right uh, because at the end of the day, Tipperary people want to be winning Monsters, they want to win all Ireland's, and that's basically, uh, that's his goal, really. It has to be his goal. Is that part of it when you're picking your coaching team, you have to be nearly thinking, what sort of team do we want to develop for the next two or three years? Like, look at Kinnerk with, uh, with Limerick, the way, I don't know, maybe there's a football in background and Hurland seems to change or is moving in sort of football in directions in terms of minding the ball, that type of thing. Is, is that a huge concern for the likes of Colm or even yourself as manager to, to, be, to be borrowing from even football or just thinking of uh, where your game plan will go? Yeah, look, Limerick have brought it to a, to a new level and uh, I'm just listening to something there actually lately about like, look, you probably can't try and replicate what they're doing. I don't think you probably should do that. You need to figure out figure out a way around it yourself maybe and what suits your team. Like, you know, so what suits Tipperary at the moment? Is it a running game? You know, what is it exactly? Like some teams set up with a plus one in the back, some teams just do things differently. Um, but at the minute, like Limerick obviously are, are on top of that, on top of the pedestal. Um, but I think you have to figure out the group of players that you have first of all and what's right for them and definitely you are looking a little further down the line two or three years but in saying that as you know management is ruthless in uh, in inter-county and you might not get two years um, if you don't see results in the first year or two like you could be your head cooking the chopping board and that's the that's the frustrating thing about inter-county management that you don't get the five six seven years I, I think the longevity needs to change on that for consistency for players um, like I know over, over Aussie rules in the AFL there seems to be more longevity of managers than that but it's very hard to, to really um, change something in a year or two like you know it's too little like you know too little time especially if you, if you have a young bunch of players who need work who need um, development um, so so yeah it's very very unique and very uh, depends very much on the team you have mm, Absolutely well look really appreciate you joining me and just uh, in terms of AS supporting information for people living with uh, ankylosing spondylitis. Did I say that right again? I'm not 100% sure. 
Yeah, that, it's available on the Arthritis Ireland website. You can see that in the link or via the helpline 0818 Thanks very much, Michael. We'll chat again in the future. Cheers, Jan.